It has been, however, many months since I last appeared, and that is because school started back and we're on a 4x4 schedule now, and I'm also teaching Tennessee history in addition to doing my library job, so I have been sort of strapped for time and got pneumonia in the middle of all of that. So I have not had a chance to read anything noteworthy of my own stash. I, re I read a lot of library books and I don't tend to do reviews on that. Just, I don't know, because I don't think they look as nice, the, the books, just because they have all the library stuff on them. Um, but I have bought some new books that have just come out and I finished one of them, which is saying something because this one is huge. And for me, I am not big on reading very long fiction. Let me put it that way. Um, a lot of times when fiction drags on to more than a certain number of pages, I feel like you're just making up time to make up time and not actually doing some sort of thing relevant to the plot. And I finished um, the newest book by Christopher Paolini, uh, Murtag, which is part of the Inheritance series. Uh, that he started many, many years ago when he was very, very young. And he has gone back to uh, with one of the villain characters, basically, from that series. He has gone back to that and um, written a book after the events of the Inheritance series dwelling just on that character. Now, let me clear this up by saying Murtag is, is a villain, was, was a villain. He redeemed himself uh, in the Inheritance series, and this is about him and sort of what happens to him after everything that has happened. Um, I will admit I have only read completely the first book of the Inheritance series. That is mainly because... Paolini was like 14 or 15 when he initially started writing that book, and it sounds like it was written by a 14 or 15 year old with a thesaurus, and that's fine. He did more than probably any other 14 or 15 year old would be able to do with that amount of writing, but he added a lot of stuff in it that didn't need to be there. He was, he was putting things in to world build and didn't quite know how to fit everything in properly. And that sort of felt that way in the Inheritance series to me. So I didn't really continue on with it. I did think he had a really good character in Murtag, which is the main character of the Inheritance series, or Aragon, uh, his half-brother. Um, and Murtag is... He, he was a character that was very fairly untreated, and you understand how he ended up how he ended up, because it was sort of Aragon got the whole golden boy uh, treatment and had a loving parent and everything like that, and Murtag ended up in a very abusive situation, and that was sort of how he ended up being the way he was. I do very much appreciate that in this book... Um, Murtag does not particularly like Aragon still, uh, even though that was the hero of the first series. Uh, Mur Murtag still has a lot of resentment towards his half-brother, has a lot of resentment over the fact that he got the better life than he did, that he is the sort of hero of the realm, even though Murtag was a very big part of that, that happening uh, when he switched sides. Um, he, he is a big key factor in them being able to win and defeat the big bad of the last one, which is, I think, Galbaterix. Um, so Murtek has a lot of resentment about that. Like, everybody hates him. He still has to sort of slide around being a, a, a person non grata in, in, in the land, even though he had a part in this, this big um, defeat that was happening of the bad guy. And yes, he did stuff for that bad guy. Of course, there's a lot of mitigating circumstances there. And another character even sort of says to him, it takes a long time for the truth to get out sometimes. Uh, you can't just start announcing the truth and have everybody believe it. Um, because he talks about the fact that, we, do you really want me here? Because, you know, that this 
did anybody really like try try to clear my name or do anything like that? And um, she's like, yeah, but it's kind of a slow process. And this is about Murtag and his dragon. His dragon's name is Thorn. They um, are start out, they're trying to do something else, and they come across this weird situation where they keep finding these people who have these weird skull amulets and seem to have some really bad magic that's going on. Murtag and Thorn then end up going to another kingdom and they get mixed up in a kidnapping that happens there. That's kind of a second plot that happens and some stuff happens with that. And then he moves on to the actual overarching plot, which is about these people called the Dreamers and this really bad magic that's happening kind of, it's a really kind of a weird cult that's happening out in the middle of nowhere. And Murtag is trying to untangle all of this. Um, I'm going to say the actual, the kidnapping storyline is, to me, was more compelling and more interesting than the dreamer thing. Once you kind of clear up what the dreamer thing is, it, to me, is sort of him just escaping from it again. And that, to me, again, took too long. Um, Paolini has gotten better about sort of tightening up his, his um, storylines. And he's gotten better about not wasting time talking about stuff that's not really relevant to the story, but he still, I felt it in the second part that he didn't have a big enough, a big enough thing with that second part to really uh, make it, make you want to stick with it a whole lot. I did a lot of like in certain areas, just sort of skimming over what happened uh, to move on. Um, his kidnapping plot that he had at the other point uh, was a lot more interesting and even the first part where he kind of gets in a bar fight was really really good and has a hardcore fight that does not happen as graphically again throughout the book um, I thought that was actually a really good fight and a really descriptive um, altercation that happens at the beginning of the book and then that thing sort of didn't really, that hardcoreness of, of, of violence never really happened again. It did a little, like they would mention things that were violent, but it did, it was not as graphic as that first section was, where I was like, oh, okay, Paolini has gotten some teeth here in how he writes things. Um, I would uh, recommend this book. Um, I would recommend it to people who maybe haven't even read the Inheritance series simply because going into this, there is a different feel to it. It does feel like a standalone. It does feel like you can figure out kind of who he is based off of just knowing the fact that the, it's kind of like the aftermath of the heroes won, everything's over with, and what do we do with the people who were left, left over afterwards? And that, to me, worked as a standalone book. You don't have to have read the Inheritance series for me to, to understand um, what's going on. And it probably is a better thing if you're just interested in getting into it. Get into this one. Don't get into the rest of the series. Um, I've heard Paolini's science fiction series is pretty good, too, that he did a better job with it. He's getting older, um, and he, just his craft is getting better. This still does have some spots that I'm just like, Ew, we could have moved along faster here. We could, we could, we could have sped this up. Um, specifically, I feel some of the stuff was, was slowed down sort of at the end, like dragging out kind of at the end of the situation with the dreamers. And once it was figured out what was going on, he just kept hanging around and hanging around. And you're like, why do you keep hanging around? Because something bad's just going to happen. He feels like a smarter character than that. And he didn't act on that part and I just felt like that was kind of a the ending slowed down more than it should have um, there at the end um, also it felt like the ending where he ended up at the ending sort of was um, it felt like that was out of the blue that, that he ended up where he was in that and sort of after all that had happened in the book, 700 pages of book, and then kind of as an afterward, like, oh, and he's here now and, and, and this has happened. And yeah, um, I don't, 
I would have liked more explanation. I would have liked more explanation of that and less explanation of what actually happened with the dreamer situation um, there at the end with the weird cult. Or if he just like focused on the made the weird cult a little more interesting, a little more you didn't know what was going on right away. Uh, with what was happening there but it really was like right away it's like oh yeah this is a weird cult and that then drug on but otherwise um i would say this is his best book out of that whole um things that i've read of his um like I said, I didn't completely finish all his other ones. Um, I did start them at different points just to see if he had like improved and I still found them sort of, um, not written very well in my opinion, but this one much, much better. And he did take a smart move in taking a character that was, I believe a fan favorite and not the focus of the series, but was a fan favorite and decided to flesh that character out more his story then can try to continue on with who the hero was of the main series whose story is over with pretty much and who to me was pretty much boring to begin with um whereas your more nuanced character he went and kind of dealt with how a a formerly bad character would be living after the good guys win and how he's still sort of on the fringes and how he's got guilt issues and and PTSD issues to deal with and things like that. And that was actually interesting. Um, so, uh, this one just came out the beginning of November uh, or middle of November. So this one still kind of fresh. And I would, uh, agree that this one is very readable. Um, especially if you're not into huge, huge high fantasy, this is high fantasy enough. Uh, I would say, on that end of things. Um, I've got some other new books that have just come out in the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to try to be getting them finished. One of them is part of the uh, Last Kingdom series, which it's kind of peripherally part of the Last Kingdom series because that series is actually over with. But um, another book has been added to it that is sort of a side project. Um, so I'm going to try to finish that one pretty soon and get something about that. But, uh, otherwise, um, I'm going to try to be back reading a little bit more. 